everyone, Kelly here, and today I want to bring you two tags in one that um, kind of embrace this time of year. I'm going to be doing the fall time cozy time book tag and the Halloween this or that tag. Um, and you'll see, I'm going to start off with the fall time cozy time tag and throw the Halloween in one later, um, just because they seem to go together. They're both pretty short tags, and I just wanted to do one fall kind of tag at once because I love the fall. I know we're already a month into fall, so it's kind of late to start this, but it is just starting to get to that cold fall weather right now in central Ohio. The leaves just this weekend like really started to pop like where you're driving through and it really looks like fall. So it feels like the perfect time to me to do this one. So let's start off with the fall time cozy time book tag, which the original was Sam's Nonsense. I was not tagged for this. I just figured my channel is Cozy Reader Kelly and there is a fall time cozy time tag. It combines some of my favorite things all in once. So here we go. Number one is Crunching Leaves. The world is full of color. Choose a book that had red, oranges, and yellow on the cover. And I went a little farther because actually almost all the books that I'm going to show in this tag, most of them have fall colors, but I wanted to show a series. So this is the Sherlock Holmes mysteries. And I just love how in total, these just make beautiful fall colors all together on my shelf. And they have like gold writing and all this stuff that are nice and shiny. So it just feels very fall and it makes me want to pick them up right now and read them. Number two is cozy sweater. It's finally cold enough to don warm, cozy clothing. What book gives you the warm fuzzies? And for this, I'll have to give one of my favorite books. And this is, I think it's a middle grade book. It might be counted as YA, but it's definitely more younger. And it's Book of a Thousand Days by Shannon Hale. And this book just, I don't know, I've read this probably at least 10 times. It's one of those that I just re pick up and read really quickly when I just need something to give me a pick me up to make me feel better. I just love this story. It's a fantasy story about a girl who is kind of the maid for somebody who is um, of gentry. And so the maid, Dashi, she gets locked into a tower with her mistress because her mistress's father is punishing her. But as the maid, she gets locked in too. And it's their time spent in the tower and their relationship and then what happens to them throughout their adventure. And this is all told in general journal writings from Dashi and I just love it. Um, there's a cat in here that is like their companion and I, I, just, I just love this book. And it's very quick, easy read. So I would recommend it to pick up in the fall. Next is Fall Storm. The wind is howling and the rain is pounding. Choose your favorite book or genre that you like to read on a stormy day. And when we get to this time of year and it's a little colder out and I wanna be all cozy in a blanket, I am like really in the mood right now to re read fantasy. Like that's like, I was doing contemporary for a lot of August and September. And right now I just wanna pick up fantasy. So a couple that I'm going to be picking up soon are the Song of a Lion uh, Lioness series, finishing that, and Well of Ascension, which is part of the Mistborn series. I just really wanna to get to these books soon. I just in a huge fantasy mood. And I think it's just like the weather has turned me into like, that just feels like cozy, you know, get to another world kind of feeling. The next question is cool, crisp air. What's the coolest character that you'd want to trade places with? And really, I just want to go to Hogwarts. So I guess if I had to pick a character, I would pick Hermione just because she's a reader and she is the most similar to me when I was in school. But yeah, I would just, I would be any character in the Harry Potter universe. Well, I guess not the bad ones. Like I don't want to be like, Voldemort, but anybody that goes to Hogwarts, I want to be there where the people are. That's different, but yeah, I want to go to Hogwarts. So anybody in the Harry Potter universe. And the next one is hot apple cider. What underhyped book do you want to see become the next biggest, hottest thing? And I would say a lot of times self-published books are underrated because obviously they don't have publishers telling everybody about them. So for me, I would say Duel of Fire, which is the book, first book in the Steel and Fire series by Jordan Rivett. I've only read three of the five books in the series, and I do want to continue now that it's fall to read the rest of them um, because these are fantasy books. They're really fun. They surprise you in ways that sometimes like books that are done by regular publishers can just 
fit into a pattern. And I feel like this book surprised me several times throughout the first three books. And so I'm just really enjoying it. And I would like to, it to get more love, especially being a self-published author. I would like to get the word out. The next prompt is coats, scarves, and mittens. The weather has turned cold and it's time to cover up. What's the most embarrassing book cover you own that you'd like to keep hidden in public? And for this, this I actually showed this in a recent reads recently that this is a book I DNF'd and part of it was because of how bad the cover was. And that is Unbreak My Heart by Melissa Walker. I mean, this is just the worst cover I have ever seen. Um, it's just not cute at all. And so I never brought it out with me when I was reading it. I ended up DNFing it because of also the story, but I just think they did a horrible job on this cover and I'm getting rid of it. It just happened to be, I hadn't gotten rid of it yet. So it was perfect answer for that question. Next is pumpkin spice. What's your favorite fall time comfort food and foods? And this is where the other tag will come in because at this time of year, what I like is warm drinks. I am not a coffee drinker. So I like chai tea lattes or um, hot chocolate, things like that. But right now I've been really into making my own chai tea um, latte. So like I used to live near a place where I could get to five different Starbucks within five minutes. I do not anymore. I live in the country. And so the nearest Starbucks is a half hour away. And I started when I first got, came here getting like the concentrate you can buy at the store, the Tazo, but that has like 16 grams of sugar per serving, which is not what I need. And same way with like the store ones. So I started making my own concentrate. So I am going to um, insert now where I am showing you how I make my own chai tea latte concentrate that you just mix with milk or milk substitute, whatever kind of milk substance you want and can make your own lattes. I just heat it in the microwave, but I also have an espresso machine that I could like, you know, foam the milk if you wanted to foam the milk to make it more of a latte. Um, yeah, so I'm going to insert that here and in that video, I will also be going through the Halloween this or that tag, which was created by Tia and all the books and I was tagged for that tag. So insert that in here. All right, so I'm sure that I explained right before this that I'm going to make my DIY chai tea latte concentrate while doing the Halloween this or that tag, which was created by Tia and all the books. So the first thing you have to do for the tea is to put five cups of water into a saucepan to boil. Just so you know, I have to film this in our apartment so the lighting's not great. And that's because we got a new stove for our regular kitchen. It's an induction stove. And my husband installed it before we had any induction pots. So none of our pots and pans work on our regular stove until we've ordered new ones. And I wanted to do this video today. So instead I'm doing it at the apartment. That's the great thing about having a secondary stove. So first let's get some water in there. So we'll just turn the water on to boil. I've never used a stove, so I have no idea how long it'll take to boil. But um, I'm gonna answer a couple questions and then I'll fast forward because you don't need to wait for water to boil either. So the first question is, do you prefer Dracula or Frankenstein? Um, I'll just preface this whole tag saying that I'm not the biggest Halloween person because I don't like scary stuff. So I usually err on the side of less scary. Um, and so between Dracula and Frankenstein, I would say I prefer Frankenstein because I like the psychology behind the story and all that, where I'm not really a big fan of vampires. So Dracula doesn't really interest me. Number two is Skellington or Sanderson, me meaning Jack Skellington from Nightmare Before Christmas or the Sanderson sisters from Hocus Pocus. I've actually never seen the Nightmare Before Christmas. I do not know how I've gone through, you know, my whole life without seeing that movie, but I have. And so I'm gonna have to pick the Sanderson sisters. Probably would have picked them anyways because Hocus Pocus is one of my favorite Halloween movies because it's not really scary. It's just that fun part of Halloween, which is the part that I enjoy. So yes, Sanderson sisters. And number three, Freddy Krueger or Michael Myers. Um, I have never seen a Michael Myers film. I think those are the Halloween films, right? And part of the reason for that is I don't really watch slasher films because I don't like a lot of blood and gore. But the other reason is because I worked at camps for years. And why would I do that to myself? Because he is like somebody that kills people at summer camps. That seems like a bad idea for somebody who worked in camping for like 
14 years of their life. So I'll have to go with Freddy Krueger. I have seen the very first Nightmare on Elm Street and he did scare me. My water sounds like it's about to boil. So what I'm gonna do is mix the spices now. So I created this recipe from a combination of a bunch of other, a bunch of other recipes that I found on Pinterest. So I will write out my recipe in the description down below because you know when it comes to chai tea latte you everybody has their own kind of like spices they want so you could take my recipe and edit it if you want a lot of recipes when you look them up have the like whole spices like whole cinnamon sticks and all that stuff that you would put in the boiling water and then filter out but where I live in the country, getting whole spices is a lot more expensive. And so I have this bulk store next door nearby. Like this whole thing of allspice was $1.50, which is cheap for spices. So that's why I was like, I want to use just regular ground spices. So this is all ground spices. And because of that, I'll show you how you have to filter it later because you have to use a special kind of filter instead of just a regular um, colander to filter out the spices. So. Mine does one teaspoon of cinnamon and one half teaspoon of ground ginger. Like I said, you could use whole ginger and cinnamon sticks. You can look up a recipe that has that. Cardamom, half a teaspoon. Cardamom is like the main flavor that makes the chai tea. So it's important because the first time I didn't have it and it definitely did not taste like chai. Uh, and then for allspice just a fourth of a teaspoon and then black pepper also adds kind of a little more of a kick to it um a lot of ones i tried used more black pepper than i prefer so i actually only do about an eighth of a teaspoon um i don't actually use an eighth of a teaspoon i just take my fourth of a teaspoon and just add a little bit so i'm going to turn down my water a little bit add in all of these spices stir it up and then you just let this simmer for however long you like. I've tried it at a lot of different times. I think a half hour is not enough to get like the real spiced flavor and an hour I lost a lot of water. So I'm just gonna go with 45 minutes and call that a good amount of time to let it simmer. And let me answer a couple more questions. So. Number four is, do you prefer vampires or werewolves? Like I said before, I'm kind of over vampires. I used to like vampires and I still like Buffy, the show, but I just don't really like vampires anymore to read or watch. And so I'm gonna say werewolves, especially since most recently I did like Teen Wolf a lot. I mean, that was still a couple years ago, but I really liked the werewolves in that. So I'm gonna go with werewolves. Number five is zombies or ghosts. I do not like body horror and I count zombies in body horror because they just gross me out. So always ghosts. Definitely do not watch anything or even read about zombies. Don't like them. And number six, witches or fairies. I'm just not gotten into fairies. I don't like to read stories about fae. I know that's really popular with like um, Court of Thrones and Roses and a lot of like champion of ravens there's all these like popular fairy books just not into fairies so i'll go with witches because witches can cover a wide range there's like good witches and like bad witches and like all kinds of like little magical things that can happen with witches so i will definitely go with those all right so we've gone 45 minutes um and now remove it from the heat and this is when we add in a couple more things so we add in the nutmeg i do it now because nutmeg is really strong so i don't put it for the 45 minutes so i put in a half a teaspoon of nutmeg and one tablespoon of vanilla and then the last thing is black tea. And when I looked up a lot of recipes, a lot of people said to use Darjeeling. And I did that the first couple times. Um, and the problem is you need 10 tea bags or 10 teaspoons of leaf, loose leaf tea. And Darjeeling can be really expensive. And so after a couple times, I decided to try it with just like plain black tea. And that's what I've been using the last couple times. 
I do think the Darjeeling makes a more like richer, fuller flavor, but this tastes just as good. And seeing as how this whole box of 100 cost 250, and so I get like 10 different recipes out of it, as opposed to the Darjeeling, which was 250 for 10 tea bags. Um, this is definitely the cheaper option. So you put the 10 tea bags in, and then off of the heat, I cover it up and just let all that sit for five minutes and steep. So while we're letting that steep for five minutes, I'm going to answer a couple questions. All right, so next question is superheroes or supervillains? I personally am one of those people that believes that superheroes wouldn't even exist without supervillains. Like they'd be just boring people because like what would they be doing? Um, if they don't have super villains to fight. So definitely going for super villains because you have to have a good villain in order to make a superhero interesting. Number eight is pirates or princesses. I, sorry, my daughter's playing in the room next door with some toy that makes noise. So you probably hear noises. So anyways, pirates or princesses. I don't know because sometimes I like a good princess story, especially with my kids. We watch a lot of princessy stuff. But I love Pirates of the Caribbean, so I'll probably just go with Pirates because especially at Halloween time, I'd rather watch Pirates of the Caribbean. But I don't really like to read books about pirates, but oh well. And then number nine is candy corn or caramels. I actually don't like either of those candies, but I think candy corn is disgusting. So I would go with caramel. I just don't like to eat caramels by themselves. I'd rather have like caramel in something, but I'll go with that. And then along the food line. Number 10 is popcorn balls or candy apples. I think candy apples are incredibly hard to eat. So I'm always gonna go with popcorn balls because like candy apples are like so hard on the outside. How are you supposed to even like chew into them? I have a hard time with them. So definitely popcorn balls. Number 11 is apple cider or pumpkin spice latte. I don't drink coffee, hence making my tea. So I would go with apple cider, but I don't like really sweet apple cider. I like it to be more on the tart side than sweet. All right, I changed up the angle a little bit so you can see this next part, because this is the filter part. And this is where we filter out all of the bits and pieces. So first I start off with the bigger, just regular colander. I mean, like this is actually like a flour sifter and just get another pot to pour it into. And I just pour everything, including the tea bags, because then I will take out the tea bags with the filter. And whoops, then just kind of squeeze a little bit of the last amount of stuff out of it. Um, and the next question of the tag is: Do you prefer? Hay rides or haunted houses, like I said before, I am chicken, so I do not do haunted houses. I haven't done one since I was like 16 years old. Still haunted by that experience because I hated it. I just don't like to be surprised. I don't like people jumping out at me and I don't like to not know what's coming. So no, I do not do, oh, sorry, my daughter just grabbed something she shouldn't have. So anyways, what I was saying is that I don't do haunted houses, so definitely hay rides. We actually did a hay ride last night with my kids. It was a lot of fun. So definitely hay rides. And then the last question for the tag is costume party or spooky Netflix binge. I don't often want to watch spooky movies. Like I might watch like one a year with my husband, like holding on tightly. Um, so definitely costume party because I like to socialize. And now for the last and most important part is the filtering, the fine filtering. If you're using whole spices, probably that bigger filter would work. But since I use the fine spices, I need something that filters it really fine. And so I ended up buying a nut milk bag. That's, I guess that's what it's called for people who make their own like almond milk or whatever. Um, you could also use cheesecloth, but I found this one was really fine. So I tried to use a coffee filter and it just took too long to filter through. So this bag actually does a really excellent job of filtering out, filtering out the ground spices. And so I just set the bag in a pot and I had transferred this to my measuring cup just for pouring. And you just pour right into the bag. And I mean, you'll see there's like a bunch of like big, spicy stuff there. So you want to get that stuff out because you don't want that in your latte. And then I just kind of 
move around the bag so that I can get all of the water tea out because the spice is all clump at the bottom of the bag. And then once I've done that, I just pour the, what remains like the concentrate into a mason jar. And then when it's time to actually drink the tea, you just, I like to do um, about two parts concentrate to one part milk. And you can use any milk, milk substitute, whatever. And then I just pop it in the microwave for a minute and a half and then add some honey. You can add honey at this stage and have the honey already in the concentrate, but I like to like know how much honey I'm putting in each cup because that was part of the point of this was to use less sugar. So then I can just put the amount of honey that I want in a serving and mix it after it's already been heated in the microwave. You could also do it chilled on ice if you prefer it that way. This isn't gonna taste just like the one at the store, but I have found after about a couple of weeks of drinking this version, that the store one is too sweet for me now. So I can't even re uh, drink regular chai at this point, except for maybe occasionally as like a dessert type thing. But this is much more preferable. I still get the black tea caffeine, get the spices, but don't get all of the extra added sugar. I'll put my recipe down below and I'll also link to this bag because I think it's an excellent bag to use and it rinses out really well. And that's it, I'll, now back to the other tag. The last question is that warm, cozy bonfire, spread the cozy warmth, who do you tag? And for this, I didn't tag anybody necessarily for the Halloween tag, so this will be for both tags. I'm gonna tag a few people and those people can decide whether they wanna do the cozy time, fall time book tag or the Halloween this or that tag, or we're all adults here. You might decide you don't wanna do a tag at all. That's perfectly fine. But anyway, these are three people that I enjoy watching. So go and check out their channels, even if they don't wanna do the tag. And so the first is Jen from the Book Refuge and then Krista from Books and Jams, and then finally Mary with Cinnamon Please because her name has cinnamon in it, which is perfect for the fall time. And she's great to watch. So I'll link all of those down below, including my recipe for my chai tea concentrate, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, bye.